I've had this car right machine for about 11 years now and I've never put up a video of anything I've actually carved I don't believe so uh, let's change that today The software used to create projects for the CarveRight is called Designer. And today we're going to start with a new project. Today's project is 44 and a half inches in length. The width is 7 inches. And the thickness is an inch and 5 eighths. Once we click OK, here's our project. This is what it looks like when it's laid out. This is my Vinyl Master software, and I got this text right here of carve tools that I want to actually cut in wood. The font for this is called Chocolate Factory, and they're all uppercase letters. And uh, CarveRite will cut this. So I've got this hammer that I'm using for the letter T. And we can actually carve that with a carve right. And I'm going to make a pattern out of it. I'm just going to save that image as a bitmap image. So we go to import, import image, and I'm going to copy from clipboard. And there is my hammer. Now we can make a pattern. I'm going to click this down button right here one time. And there it is. It's so simple. You just hit finish. And we're going to save it into this pattern library. This is under Carve Tools, and I'm just going to call it Hammer. Hit Save. And we go up here and we click on our patterns. And uh, here it is over here. We drop down, and there's our hammer. And I just drag it over to the board. And there it is. Now I'm going to resize it. You can resize, stretch, flip, whatever you want to do with this thing. It's so really cool. So we got the hammer there, and I want to center this hammer onto the board here. Okay, so we got our hammer. So now I got to come back. I want to make this uh, C from the Chocolate Factory font. So that's very easy to do in Carve Right. We hit uh, Text, and I got my C in here, and I'm going to find the font Chocolate Factory. There it is, and uh, we just and there's our C. We can resize that, move it around. I do want to center it. I want the C and the hammer, which is the T, to be the same height. So I'm going to drag these over here together and uh, see how close we got here. So we're centering the hammer and the C. And we bring them together, and that's pretty close, actually. Um, I think I'll be happy with that right there. That's, that's going to work out. All right, let's move our C back over, and uh, let's get the rest of the text we need. So the carve tools, and we're going to use these as lowercase. I'm not going to need the T, so I'm going to add a couple of spaces in between there. And once again, I'm going to resize these. And you can play around with the text ever how you want it. You can make it do pretty much anything you want to. It's really cool how it works. So I'm just messing around with it here to get the space in exactly like I want it. I'm going to bring the C in a little closer. Bring the hammer in or the T in a little bit. And I, a lot of times I'll switch it into this mode here. I'm going to select all these and I'm going to align them to the bottom. I want everything on the bottom to be aligned. So they're perfectly aligned on the bottom now. And I'm, I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. I, I like the way that looks so far. So we're going to 
look at these. We're going to make a rectangle around it. And this is going to be the area that's carved out in the background. I center these horizontally and vertically. And they'll be perfectly centered into the project board. And I'm sorry for the zooming in and out right there. I just, it's just habit. I'm going to use this outline pattern tool. I'm going to scroll down to this vertical wave. I've done another sign like this, and I really like the way it looked. And we're going to change the um, spacing on it to one and a quarter inches. Click OK, and uh, there's our pattern back, back behind here. And I really like the way this thing looks. I'm going to take the uh, lines off so we can take a better look at it. So it's looking pretty good so far. The depth of the hammer is a little bit too shallow, so we can raise that up a little bit. And we just enter a value in up here and bring it up. And it's the same height as the rest of the text now, so that's going to look good. So far, everything we put together is laid out exactly like I want it. I want to select all the text and the little hammer there, and I'm going to make a pattern out of it. So I select all these and I want to group them together. I'm going to make a group, then we're going to make a pattern. We go over here to um, make pattern and I'm going to call this Carve Tools. And it's going to put it over here in our pattern library. So I've got it in the pattern library over here. I want to center everything, so I'm just going to delete all these. And now I'll go back to the pattern library and uh, just drag this over. And to make sure it's perfectly center, we can go up here and we're going to go up here. It says center both. And this is perfectly in the center of the board and it's looking just like I wanted it to. And it's amazing because when this cuts, cuts out, when it carves out through the machine, it's going to look exactly like this. Okay, sometimes different woods like to split when you're carving text right here. The larger the text, the better it is. The small text is sometimes can get pretty difficult to do. But I'm going to come over here and we're going to add a little draft to it. I actually call it a chamfer or draft. So we're going to go down here, we're going to go to this large down here and see how it puts the, um, puts that little slope on the edge. And this here is, that's a little bit too much and I'm just going to use the small right here and it's going to work really good with this cedar. This cedar carves really nicely. And I'm going to select the rectangle also, and I'm going to put a little bit of draft on it so it doesn't just chop it off straight at the edge. Okay, here's our design. It's looking good. Now what do we do with it? We got to get this inside the machine. So we're going to do some steps right now. I'm going to show you how to transfer it to the machine so you can make this beautiful carving. So we've got this memory card and this memory card writer right here. And we're going to plug it into our USB port up here and get it turned the right direction. And uh, this is how you transfer it. We're going to go down here to uh, upload and it's reading the program. It's compiling the program for the machine language. And here it says it's going to take about two hours and five minutes, two hours, six minutes. And this is usually pretty accurate. We're going to use a normal quality. I've got the file name right there. I'm going to call it. And I'm just going to hit upload. Um, it's already on there. I'm going to override it. And it's transferring that program onto the memory card. And it's amazing how fast this is. This is uh, really cool how it does it. I think there's a new machine that uses a USB drive, which would be awesome. Because these memory cards and writers and all that does get quite expensive. So this is my project material for today. And I've got two of these glued up together. I wished I had some that had the same grain, but this is uh, cedar. 
and it's an uh, inch and five eighths in height. And our length on this here is 40, what is it? 45 and a half. I think my project actually, actually said 44 and a half, but this is 45 and a half. This is going to work just fine. The width is right at seven inches. And it does have some nail holes in it, and I really don't care about that. It's no big deal. Um, this is just reclaimed lumber I ran across, so this is going to work out good. Now, the board that I have run it through the planer and I've made it smooth, and it's uh, not warped or anything. It's got a big chunk right here. This big chunk can can be an issue if you put it in the machine wrong. So we're going. I'll show you that later on. And, uh, but this this board is straight and uh, it's been planed, it's smooth, so it's going to be good. So one thing we need to do right here. Here I'm adding some blue tape to the underside of the board. And this is going to be coming in contact with the encoder inside the machine. And you'll see a little bit more about that in just a second. I'll show you a little bit about the machine here. I've got a dust collector. If you got to carve right, you need a dust collector. You got to get the dust out of there. Dust is not friendly to mechanical, little mechanical moving parts and uh, some sensors in here. So let me show you how this works here. So I've got this uh, dust collector hood up here, the carve right hood. And we come down underneath and um, comes down to a wide. This this right here, this is the exhaust filter. I've got it running underneath the machine table here. It makes it sound a little quieter. And I got this trough that I built because the center of the carve right, I'll show you in a second, has uh, a place for dust to fall down into. And so we're sucking dust from the center of the machine and also from the top. And uh, here's the center of the machine down here. It's got a little trough down in there. And it goes into the suction area. Um, let's turn the light on. I made this light a long time ago, probably about 10 years ago. And it really lights up the machine a little bit to see what's going on inside. And you can't really see it because of this bar down here. But there, there's a hole that goes down and dust does go through it. Yeah, dust is not friendly to this machine. You definitely want to get rid of your dust. And this power cord right here goes to my I Am Dave controller. This is, I think IVAC makes a uh, automatic dust collector controller. This right here works a little same way, but a little different. It's got a time delay on it because sometimes your uh, spindle will turn on and there's no need for the dust collector to just momentarily bump on and off. So this has this controller has time delays on it. Um, I've got a remote that I use on this dust collector and this is it. We're going to disconnect that and we're going to plug our motor directly into the I Am Dave controller. Okay, now we can uh, put our project in here, and we do that through our memory card. This is a different card than what I showed earlier. If you have a card, right? You probably got at least four, five, six of these. Turn the power on, and I don't even remember the last time when I even carved a project. It's been a while. So we select our project menu, and we you can scroll up here till you find the project we did. This was Carve Tools, I think, called Cedar. That's it. It shows the dimensions, and this is going to be important here in a minute. I'll this please close cover, huh? That's common. So this is a fault that will happen a lot of times. My cover won't close. Well, it's got two micro switches. This one right here is hardwired to the uh, cut motor, and that's this is all safety related. So 
it cuts the power on the motor if the door is open. And the one on this side, this is the one that's not working. So I'm going to click it in here. You can hear it clicking, maybe. And when this cover closes, it makes these little micro switches up. Now, I'm not going to take this cover off to adjust the switch, but I will do a little fix for it. So it, this is the switch that's not working. I'm going to take a little bit of blue tape and just tape up on the end of this the striker on the lid right here to make this switch up. Um, next time I take the machine apart to clean it, I'll make that proper adjustment on it. So we got the cover switch working and we just hit start here and the machine's going through. You got two choices right here, stay under rollers or no. If you sit, say no, it's just, well, you're done. You just need to stay under rollers. Here's this brass roller right here. And I showed you earlier the tape on the board. Now this board rides across it. I got a little board here. I'll show you what happens. Here's the brass roller as the board rides and travels through the machine in this X direction. It uh, contacts this roller and it's a little encoder and it knows the position of the board. That's all it does. And if it ever comes off of it, then you, it messes up your project. So here's the board, project board with the uh, blue tape. We're going to load this board in. And it's got this little bar on the on the other side here, and we're going to drag it in. So this one's flat up against this guide bar. And this other guide bar, we're going to scoot it over, and it's going to keep it in track, keep the board from moving around. This board is uh, perfectly square, so... It should ride pretty good. It's got a little bit of movement in there. It got a little wiggle room. I think some people say use a quarter width in there. Um, trial and error, you'll figure out exactly where it needs to be. It's saying load board. It's in there and I'm gonna start moving the head down. And this has got a clutch mechanism on it, and it's got two rollers that uh, put tension on the board. So what I actually want to do, I want to show you how that works. So here's your roller. You got two rollers. You're on the front and the back, and they're spring loaded. And uh, I think I'll show you if I can reach under here and do it. I'll show you see how it moves up and down. I think I'll get a better shot of that. You see how it moves up and down, it's got tension on it, and there's actually some micro switches in there to tell you, hey, I'm under the rollers or I'm not under the rollers. So you do want to try to keep all that as clean as possible. That's why a dust collector is so valuable. And as we crank it down, it's got a clutch position. And get about two or three turns. I think I did four, I don't think it really matters. But uh, here on the screen, it says enter to proceed. And now it's got a, oh, please close the cover. Let's close it down. So we're good there. Just press enter. And now we got to measure this board. The machine needs to know what do I have in there? Does it match my program? Can I, is it the same dimensions as the program? So this takes a few minutes to do. And I think the newer version software may shorten the time it does this. Uh, I haven't downloaded it yet, but uh, we'll find out soon. So here's the board traveling in and out. So it takes just a minute or two to uh, measure this board.
Okay, so it, it measured the board. It's, it don't have the same length as what it actually is. But uh, that's fine. It, this will work out just fine. I'm just going to hit scale to length. And I'm going to center on width. And it says, uh, this is always gets me here. Do you want to cut it to size? No, I don't want to cut it to size. I got all these saws out here. It would, I don't even know how it could cut something like that. Inch and, inch and five eighths, I don't think you'll cut it. So the carve right is just one tool in your woodworking shop. I mean, this is an enhancement. Um, it's just one item. It's just like your saw. You can't do everything on your table saw. Here it's telling us to load our 1 16th inch carbon bit. And I'll show you how that works right there. Uh, yeah, let's, let's hit enter and it'll move to the center so we can actually load it. The machine is already loaded with a 1 16th inch carbon bit. I want to take it out and show you how that works. So we just remove it. And this is the bit. We just simply just put it in, tighten it up, and we're good to go. This is a little striker plate. The uh, Y truck comes over here and it pushes against it and swings it out. And this way the, uh, the depth of the bit can be found. And I'll have a close up, that, close up of that here in a minute. Now this little cable back here, this causes people havoc because this cable will get out of place sometimes and your Y truck will come over here and it will hit that cable. So the truck, when he's trying to register this bit, he comes over here and he hits that cable and he can't get all the way over where he needs to be. So he misses the little striker plate down there. And that'll cause all kind of trouble. It'll say, I think it says bit not found. So here we start. And it's going to start doing some measuring. Comes over. Now the dust collector didn't turn on when this spindle motor turned on. Look here, as it goes down, it does not touch the striker plate. So, if it doesn't touch the striker plate, that's going to be an issue. And normally, it will be touching, just barely touching the board right here, the work surface of the board. And so, it come out to the middle, it said load the bit. And it said, hey, I've already loaded the bit. What's going on? Let's take a look here. So let me, let's do this again. You could, you could do this all day long and it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna say, I don't see it, I don't see it. If we look at it down here, the bit never touched the plate. We'll play this again here in slow motion and the bit never came down to the plate. You can see a little wear mark where it touches there. And there, something's not right. The machine's telling you something is wrong. If we look back, we loaded the card, went to the project menu, we opened this project up. In this case, here's the problem. I told the thickness was an inch and a half, and it's really an inch and five eighths, maybe even a little more. So they've got some inconsistencies there in the machine, and they don't like it. So here I corrected the program reloaded everything and now we're starting to cut. As it starts off, the dust collector is not on at this point. With the spindle turning, it's got a time delay on it. So it'll kick on here in just a second. But uh, you can see all that dust going around. Imagine if you had no way of getting that dust out. That's why the dust collector is so important. The first few passes of here are gonna be slow. 
and then it'll kick up some speed. And this is re just really fascinating, the design of this machine is really cool how it works. I mean, you can have a board in here up to 12 feet long. Can you imagine a 12 foot piece of wood being carved? And I've done one of those before. I forget how many hours it was like, oh, please, Lord, don't let the power go off. <laughs> but uh, it turned out successful. So here it is in fast motion. Down here in this yellow area, this is the traction belt. I want you to look at that. These things move just ever so slightly as it's carving. And this is in fast speed right here. And see those belts moving? They are moving so slow, pulling your workpiece through as it's doing the car. And here's a little bit of an upper view of it. And it's, to me, it's just fascinating how this works. So it's going to continue to do this for like two hours, and uh, our project will be complete. Here's our carved project. It says carved tools. And notice I did pull the locking lever out. Some of you might say, hey, you didn't pull the locking lever out. But yeah, I actually did. It says two hours, seven minutes, which is about right on time, estimated time. So uh, let's get this thing out and see what it looks like. Push your locking lever in. Raise our head up. And notice there's not a whole lot of dust on this thing. Uh, the dust collector really pulled that dust out. Imagine what this machine would look like if you left all that dust in there. There's a few little chip outs there. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. This is reclaimed lumber. I see the grain on it. I wish I had two boards that had the same grain. If we look inside here, there's only a little bit of dust inside the machine. Now, if you've ever run one of these without a dust collector, you're going to be pretty nasty in there. And that, that can actually damage your machine. It's going to make things not work like they should. And and uh, this machine's actually pretty clean on the inside. I, I'm, I'm pleased the way it worked. So a dust collector is a plus. Actually, it's a must. A dust collector you need. So here's our carved project. Like I said, it's just one of the tools in your toolbox. It'll clean up work. It goes a long ways and I want to show you how I do this. So over here on my lay, I got a sanding mop. I have a worn out sanding mop. I need to make some new uh, sandpaper strips for it. And I just put it over here and gently go over this board on the pattern side, of course. And I'm going to just go back and forth all the way. Everything that was carved will run over this sanding mop. This cedar carves really nice. I like the way it looks. But we've still got a little more work I want to do on this board. So, like I said, this is just one tool in your toolbox. You're going to need some other tools to make a good project. Here's my board. It's painted. Let me show you. I didn't show you exactly how I got there, but I did take a router and I routed an edge around it. I used a router. I don't remember if I used a router or a router table. Either one will work. Made the edge around it. I took some sand and sealer after I did the routing. And I sanded it, and I taped it off. I used some black lacquer. And uh, here we are now. So I want to get the letters just like looking like the raw cedar. 
but I did want to paint the background. Painting's not my favorite thing to do. So we're going to run this through the planer, and we're going to see if we can take off that paint up there. I, I've done it in the past, just sanding it. This here is so much easier, and it, depending on what type of wood you're using, you, you have to be careful where you may chip the letters out. This uh, planer's got some brand new blades on it, so it should work just fine. So this is two passes. I still see a little bit of paint on the letter, so we're gonna run it one more pass, and I think it's gonna clean it up just nicely. Notice how the carve right and the planer resemble each other? Oh yeah, this is gonna work out just fine. I love the way this looks. This turned out really good. So, the project turned out pretty much like I thought it would. It's just gonna need a coat of polyurethane on it and I think that wood grain will really come out and make this look really nice. So remember, the carve right is just one tool in your woodworker's toolbox here. So uh, yeah, this is just a short little overview of what you can do with a carve right. But it's limited to your imagination. I really love this machine. I've had it 11 years, almost 12 years. And it seems like I learn something new every time I do a project. So hey, I'm Dave. This is Carve Tools. Thanks for watching. So please subscribe. And a thumbs up is always appreciated. Thanks guys, y'all have a great day.